Today we're going to talk about function tables. In math, when you see a table, it actually is a function table. All tables are function tables. All tables have a function, and you guys just didn't ever realize that, that all tables have a function. When you look at a table in math, the function tables are like machines. You enter in a number, and then the table does something to the numbers you enter, and then it spits out with another number, right? You always see two or more rows. So your input is on one side, and then it comes out with a new number on the other side. So for example, let's say here's a table, and you put in one, okay? The table will do something to the one, and it'll come out with another number. Let's say you put in two into the table. The table will do something with two, and then it comes out with another number. So tables are like machines. Okay, so function tables are just like machines. So we can pretend that this is a money machine. Let's say you built a machine. It's a money machine. And when you enter in a dollar, it gives you $10. When you put in $2, it gives you $20. When you put in $3 into the machine, it gives you $30, okay? So what is this machine doing to the dollars you're putting in so that it comes out with more money? So what is the function of this table? What is it doing? What's the rule? And now a lot of times, in math, we use x for the input, y for the output, but really you can use any variables you want to represent the input and the output. So what are we doing to our x's to get our y's? What is our rule for this table? And then I'm sure some, most of you guys have seen that our rule is that whatever we're putting in, the machine is multiplying it by 10 to get our output. Okay, so our rule is that we are multiplying the x by 10, and the way we write that is 10x. Not x10, not 10 times x, right? We just put the variable next to the number to show multiplication. So if we put in $5, what is the machine going to do to the 5? It's going to multiply it by 10, and we would get $50. If we put in $10, the machine will multiply it by 10, and it would give us 100. So the rule is 10x. Now here's a second function table. Okay, now function tables aren't always vertical. Sometimes it's horizontal. And when it's horizontal, your top numbers are your input and your bottom numbers are your output. So basically, what are you doing to the top number to get the bottom number, right? Now you might say, well, maybe it's times 2 because 1 times 2 is 2. But is 2 times 2 6? No, so that doesn't work. Then you might think maybe it's plus 1. Maybe the machine's just adding 1, but then 2 plus 1 doesn't give us 6. So when you can't think of a single operation to do to the input to get the output, then it's probably a double operation. You're probably multiplying it by something and then plus or minus. Now since the numbers go in order here, you will notice a pattern with the output. You can see that the output is increasing by by 4 each time. Now that is not your rule. Your rule is not, oh, it must be that the machine is adding 4 to each of our inputs. And you can see that that's not true because if you put in 1, if the machine were to add 4 to it, you would get 5, not 2. So the plus 4 is a pattern we notice. It is not the rule. That is not what the machine is doing to our numbers. But we can use that pattern to figure out what the rule is. If it's increasing by 4 each time, if we're repeatedly adding 4, then your rule must be that you must be multiplying by 4. Remember, multiplication is the same thing as repeated addition. So if it's increasing by 4 each time, you know your rule must be the input times 4 and then plus or minus something. So 1 times 4 is 4, but how do we get to 2? We have to take away 2. Now, does the times 4 minus 2 work for all of them? Let's see. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2 is 6, that works. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 is 10, that works. 4 times 4 is 16, minus 2 is 14, that works. So when we get to 10, we would do 10 times 4, which is 40, but minus 2 would be 38. So the repeated, the pattern does help us figure out the rule. If it's adding 4 each time, our rule must have a times 4 in it, and then plus or minus. So for x, for any input we put in, what is the machine doing? It is multiplying x by 4 and then taking away 2. So this is our rule for this machine, for this table. Okay? Let's look at one more function table. Okay? Now this one's a little harder with some fractions in it. Okay? So let's think about our input. We put in 2. The machine gives us 2 and a half. 
So you might think, oh, maybe it's adding a half, but then three plus a half is not two and three fourths, so that doesn't work, right? Now, since the numbers are going in order, you do notice a pattern with the output. The output is increasing by a fourth each time, because a half plus another fourth is three fourths. Three fourths plus another one fourth would give you three holes, right? And then three plus another fourth gives you three and one fourth. And then three and one fourth plus another one fourth would give you three and a half. So you notice that there is a pattern. They're adding a fourth each time, which means, now that's not our rule, obviously, two plus a fourth is not two and a half. But our pattern helps us figure out the rule. We must be multiplying by one fourth and then plus or minus something. So let's try that out. Let's try two times a fourth. Okay, two times a fourth is a half, all right? And then how do we go from a half to two? We add two holes to that. Let's see if that works for all of them. Three times one fourth is three fourths, and then three fourths plus two would be two and three fourths. Four times one fourth is one, and then one plus two is three. Five times one fourth is five fourths, which is one and one fourth. One and one fourth plus two holes would give us three and one fourth. So does the times one fourth plus two work? Yes, it does. So that's how the pattern helps us. So our rule here is that we are multiplying a fourth times x and then adding two. So this is our rule. So when we get to 100, we would do 100 times a fourth, which is 25, and then 25 plus two is... 27. That would be our answer for 100. Okay. Now, function tables can also help us figure out word problems. You can put you can put all the info in a word of a word problem into a function table. So here it says Riley gets a job at Chewy's. He earns five dollars an hour, plus he usually gets twenty dollars in tips each night he works. So here's your keyword, $5 every hour. So you know you're gonna have to be multiplying the hours that he works by five because he gets $5 every hour. So it's gonna be five times the hours, plus he gets what? $20 tip. So here it says write the relationship between his hours worked and earnings. Now in math, when you see the word relationship, it's not boyfriend, girlfriend stuff, right? In math, when you see the word relationship, that's the same thing as coming up with the rule. What are you doing to the hours to get its, his earnings? So what are you doing to the input to get the output? The hours is our input, the earnings is our output. What do we have to do to the hours he works in order to figure out how much money he makes? So in math, when I say find the relationship, it's basically what are you doing to one to get the other? Well, let's fill out a table to figure that out, to figure out our rule. So hours, I'll use H for hours and E for earnings. So let's say Riley worked for one hour. Well, he gets $5 an hour, so for that one hour, he would get $5. Plus, he usually gets, what, $20 tip, so that would be $25 that he gets. Okay, what if he worked for two hours? Well, he gets $5 every hour, so we would do 5 times 2. That would be $10. 5 and 5 is 10, right? But he also gets the $20 tip, so that would be $30. What if he works for three hours? Well, he gets $5 every hour, so five times three is 15. He would get $15 for the three hours he works, plus what? The $20 tip that he gets, so that would be 35. What if he works for four hours? Well, he gets $5 every hour, so for four hours he would get $20, and then plus the $20 tip he would get 40. So what are we doing to the hours to get the earnings? What if I put in 10 hours? What if Riley worked for 10 hours? How much money would he get that day? Well, he gets $5 every hour, so we would do $5 times 10. That's $50, but don't forget to add in his $20 tip that he usually gets at the end of the night. So then that would be $50 plus the $20 tip, and that would be $70. So what are we doing to the hours to get our earnings? Well, it's $5 every hour, so we're doing five times the hours, and then we also have to add in the $20 tip. That is what we're doing to the hours to get the earnings, five times the hours plus 20. Okay, so the relationship between hours and earnings is that five times the hours plus 20 gives us his earnings. That is the equation, that is the rule for this problem. Okay, so when you read a word problem, you can also 
put your information in a table to figure out the relationship between your input and your output, to figure out what you have to do to one to get the other.